Hey, guys, I'm Mufasa. It's Brandon. I'm back with another video. I feel like this channel has become more like a LUT channel in a sense. Uh, a lot of you guys had a lot of questions about some of the recent videos that I posted and wanted me to compare a couple of LUTs together, which is the Leeming LUTs, we got Phantom LUTs, and then we're also gonna throw in the Buttery LUTs and Film Convert, and we're gonna kind of compare them together to see kind of what they do and which one is gonna be best suited for you. Now, my previous videos that I've made comparing the LUTs, I didn't do it very scientifically. So today we bought an actual video card and we're gonna kind of do it a little bit more accurate and more scientific instead of just looking at it based off of the eye. So the way I did this comparison is for the Leeming LUTs, the recommendation is to do an exposure overexposed to the right, ETTR. And for the other three LUTs, Phantom, Buttery, and for Film Convert, uh, those were just done at a neutral exposure, exposing for middle gray on the camera in S-Log3, S-Gamut3 dot Cine for all four comparisons. Now the reason why Leeming LUTs is exposed differently because if you apply the LUT using a neutral exposure using your like your gamma display assist on the monitor, when you apply the LUT, it's gonna be underexposed. So the creator of that LUT recommends exposing to the right, really overexposing right to the point where you're about to clip highlights. And then when you apply the LUT, it brings everything down. And I believe it's just to kind of bring down a lot of the noise that S-Log3 has and it helps kind of push down that noise floor. Um, but with the other LUTs, it doesn't really matter. You kind of just use your gamma display, exposed for skin tones, that sort of thing, and you should be good. So we're gonna kind of look into a couple of these LUTs here. We're gonna import them into DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna kind of take a look and see how they performed and which one is gonna be best suited for you. Now, if I have any discount codes or anything that can kind of help you all out, I'll put them down in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so we have our first exposure here with our video card, and I did two takes. I did one that was kind of indoors with like a studio setup, our studio lights kind of similar to what we're doing here. And then the other one is outdoors, so that way you can kind of see how the greens and the blues look and that sort of thing besides just looking at little like color chips on our color checker. So the first one we're gonna put is our Leeming LUTs and we are gonna do uh, the Leeming LUTs Pro and we're just gonna go, we don't want creative. That's like three. There we go. So we applied the Leeming LUTs here and we're gonna take a quick look at the scopes and see how it is. Now Leeming LUTs, I'm just gonna tell you before looking at the scopes, Leeming LUTs is the way to get the most accurate colors out of your camera, the Sony cameras. Um, now, the support for these types of cameras, there's a lot of camera support. Like common consumer cameras, you're most likely gonna find it on Leeming LUTs. And Leeming LUTs basically just fixes your log curve, puts it into a standard Rec. 709 look, and gets you the most accurate colors. And if you guys are getting value from this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification so you can see more videos like this in the future. So if color accuracy is something that's important to you, or if you wanna convert your footage into a very accurate Rec. 709, and then maybe do your creative grade after that, this is probably the LUT that you can use. Now, Leaming LUTs also comes with a couple of other like creative looks that you can add. You can add like film looks and stuff on top of your conversion. So you can first convert it to Rec. 709, and then you can apply their like film LUTs that they supply. But as far as ease of use, this one is fairly easy to use. The only thing though, is that if you're used to using your gamma display on your monitor and exposing that way, this can be a little bit tricky or confusing because you really have to overexpose your image in order for the living LUT to work. Here you have to kind of look at your histogram on your display and make sure that all of your information is exposed to the right. That way when you apply the LUT, everything gets spread out and pushed down into a nice even Rec. 709 look. So let's take a look at our scopes here. If you look at the scopes, you're gonna see that pretty much the color chips, everything is dead on. Our skin tone line is like pretty much slicing it perfectly. So this is something if you wanted accurate colors. Now here, let's see, I may have underexposed it a little bit here looking at our exposure. So if you're looking at like our exposure tools here, we might be a little bit, um, I still probably didn't 
overexposed enough looking based off of um, the waveform here. So if we want to just kind of simply correct it, we can just go into our curve, pick a point up here, pick it all the way up until it's about 90. So our white chip here, you want it around 90 to 100. And then you want this middle chip here to be around 50 or 500 or so, whatever. Uh, anywhere from 50 to 60, that's kind of your middle gray. And then this line right here, we need it to be around 300 or 384 or whatever. And we're gonna kind of maybe just pick up our exposure even more here in the middle, our midpoint. And then our black point here, you wanna kind of drop it down till it's about zero. All right. So now we've got a nice, good exposure. All of our chips are perfectly exposed for. I did a custom white balance before shooting this. And then like if you look at my face here, oops, I kind of messed that up here. Right there, we have a nice exposure. You look at the skin tone line, everything is nicely exposed, accurate accurate colors so now they do support other profiles picture profiles too like s-log2 uh, cine even as cinetone exposures um, so there's a lot of flexibility there you just apply it but the main thing with this is making sure that you get your proper exposure so let's take a look at the shot outside real quick before we move on to some of our other LUTs here so this shot here was also overexposed way overexposed like i'm pretty much if you look here on the waveform i'm pretty much clipping the highlights here at like at 95. i had my zebra set to 95 and i exposed just under that uh before i could you know clip the highlights so that was kind of like the downside see because if you have to really overexpose everything it gets a little tricky anyway so we're gonna apply our let and as you can see it's still underexposed even in that aspect so it's kind of uh, it's it's just it gets tricky it gets tricky when you like i said when you're using it because even then you saw how overexposed that footage was like let's see if we kind of um let's just reset our nodes real quick so so if you look at this clip versus this clip you see i'm i'm, I'm overexposed as far as much as i can i mean look at that that's really overexposed so even then here the exposure was still not enough so if we wanted to fix that really quickly so we make so we make sure that our exposure is dead on get a point up here drag it up to around the 89 on our waveform here and then we're going to look at middle gray and we're going to push our mids up even more so we're going to push that up and then we're going to come here and we're going to bring this point down And we're gonna kind of finesse this curve a little bit more. Something right about there. So that is a nice S curve here that we had to add in order to get our exposure right. And if we look at this on the full screen, that's kind of our look right here. Pretty accurate colors. If we're looking at our vectors here, our vector scope, all of the colors kind of just go directly towards where they need to go. Red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow are all uh, pretty much dead on with their uh, color accuracy. So that's kind of the thing. So like if like I just demonstrated here, it is kind of gets a little tricky. You really, the leaming LUTs are kind of light hungry, I guess. And so that kind of makes it a little bit tricky. But other than that, great LUTs. If color accuracy again is your main priority, this is kind of the LUT for you. So let's take a look at some of our other LUTs now. I'm a huge, huge fan of the phantom LUTs, okay? And so we're gonna take a look at their vector scope and our waveform and so this exposure or exposed here from middle gray and then we are gonna apply our phantom LUT. We're gonna go to our legacy exposure because uh, we kind of wanna do this more accurate so we're gonna kind of do that legacy and neutral and we just double click and apply it. Now if you look at the vector scope first, you're gonna see that the colors are not as accurate now as they were for the leaming LUTs. You're gonna see that our kind of like our blues are kind of shifted now towards cyan, and our cyan is also kind of shifted up towards blue. Now green, yellow, red, and there's even a little bit of magenta shift here. But if you look at the skin tone, the skin tone line is pretty much slicing it. It's perfect there. Now look at our now if you look at our uh, 
you know, our waveform here, um, pretty much when you expose for your skin tones or when you expose for middle gray, applying the LUD is going to give you pretty much a good uh, standard exposure. Um, and that's the best part is that with the Phantom Let's At Least, Joel Famalaro has basically come out and said in a podcast that we did together that exposure is pretty much based off of your creative choices. Um, you don't have to get too scientific with it. You can use your gamma display. You can use a monitor, use the zebras to expose for skin. It is up to you. It is based off of the scene that you're exposing for, as opposed to like gleaming LUTs, where it basically says exposed to the right pretty much all the time. So that's the main difference here. Uh, for me, it's a little bit more intuitive using phantom LUTs and, the, and maybe in the buttery LUTs in a sense that when I'm exposing and I'm shooting and running gun style, that sort of thing, uh, I'm not really keeping in mind like, oh, I have to expose to the right, expose to the right. I'm pretty much set my zebras to 55 to 65 range, depending on what I'm exposing for. And then I just kind of eyeball it from there. So let's just fix our curve real quick. We're gonna kind of create a point up here bring the white point up to around 90. And if you see here, our point here in the middle needs to go down. We need to bring that down a little bit to like 50. Um, we can go up a little bit actually right here. And then we're gonna bring our bottom here. So like if you see here, like if we go to our wheels and you try to bring your black point all the way down, you see that? You see down here, the black point is set to right above zero. So no matter how much you try and crush your blacks, this is what I was talking about right here. It doesn't go further down besides, I'm pretty sure it's like at five IRE. So let's reset that real quick. Go back to our curve, make a nice, so this is a less like of an S curve and more aggressive S curve for our contrast and all that stuff. So it looks like we're pretty good right there. And where's my face? Actually, if you look at my skin, this part here, we might need to bring it down even more now. So now we're gonna go based off of like how it kind of looks and how it presents. And I think my skin is a little bit too hot. We need to be like way down here, I think. Maybe around this range here, around the 50 to, all of that information right here is my skin. And maybe we could just bring this curve up a little bit, kind of pop the skin out a little bit more. In there, I think that's a little bit better exposure. So we exposed based off of the video card um, first, and then obviously that didn't work. And honestly, most of the time, the running gun stuff that I do, I don't have video cards. And so I'm usually fixing the, adding the contrast and all that stuff with curves in post, um, not really using video cards. So. That looks good right there. Go outside with our exposure here and we're gonna apply the grade. So we're gonna apply our phantom LUTs out here. And if you see that, look at that, that looks really nice exposure. You know, our skin tones, I exposed there for around 55. So our skin tones are nice. Um, one thing about the phantom LUTs that you can really kind of tell who's like who made it or who's using them is the greens. The greens kind of have this like neon green uh, to it. And if you look here on the uh, vector scope, you can see that it kind of like pushes kind of towards yellow. Um, and so that's kind of the, the LUT when you apply it. Now this one, the downside now for phantom LUTs is that there is not a lot of camera support. You have your basic Sony alpha cameras. So like a seven S three, a seven three, and some of the, even the crop sensor cameras are supported. He only makes his LUTs for S-Log2 and S-Log3. Doesn't do any of the other picture profiles uh, just because uh, he wants to get the most dynamic range from his cameras. Now, the other cameras that are supported on here, we got the Airy, Alexa, and the Miras, uh, FX9, FS7, FS5, and the FX3. Um, so, and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, 4K and 6K. So up until that point, that's pretty much all that is supported there. There's no other support for other cameras. There's no Canon, there's no Nikon, Fuji. So there is a limit to the amount of cameras that you can use this LUT on, which is my favorite LUT, which is the Phantom LUT. This is the LUT that I use. Now, color accuracy is not the thing here. This is more to get you that airy Rec 709 match. Now, this match is done pretty much, it's a 95% match. Uh, 
that Joel Famalaro did months and months of work to try and get it matched to his Airy Alexa. The other person that also makes an Airy Rec 709 kind of match is the Buttery Lutz. So let's take a quick look at the Buttery Lutz. So the Buttery Lutz are another way to kind of get you that Airy Rec 709 look. So if we're gonna look here, we're gonna kind of look at our, our image here. And you're gonna see again now, the greens here look like they shift even more to the yellow with the Buttery Lutz. Um, our skin tone actually kind of seems like it's kind of going a little bit more towards yellow instead of like the magenta or green, I'm saying. I, I should say it's shifting more green than magenta. So, um, and when you look at the Phantom LUTs, the skin tone line is pretty much dead on with skin tone line. And then our greens here seem to kind of be shifting a little bit more towards green instead of yellow. Um, let's see, where else? I think that's pretty much the main difference here. Now, it looks like we even need to add a more aggressive curve here to get kind of like our exposure down a little bit better. Maybe something like that, just add a little bit more contrast. But yeah, you can totally tell that the, the skin tones here look a little bit more green. So if we wanted to fix that really quickly um, to kind of get the skin tone to match a little bit better, we just kind of push it up a little bit, add a little bit more magenta and it looks better, I think right there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely green in the skin tones with the, fant uh, with the buttery LUTs. So maybe the buttery LUTs require a little bit more tweaking. Both of these LUT manufacturers, so these are both the buttery and the phantom LUTs are both geared toward matching that Airy Rec 709 look so here's our last clip we're now in davinci resolve let's get our clip here and so we're going to use film convert now film convert is a nice plugin if you're trying to get that creative film look now this plugin is not based off of color accuracy at all it's based off of film and film stocks and kind of converting whatever footage you have into a standard film stock like kodak fuji eterna uh, 5207 all those things are uh, included in that. Now, I love Film Convert for the reason that it allows me to match multiple cameras. So we're in Final Cut Pro because I don't have it installed in DaVinci Resolve, and most of the time I edit in Final Cut anyways. Alrighty, so we applied our plugin, and you're gonna open it, and here is our Film Convert tab. We're gonna click on Film Convert, and now it's starting to ask us what the make, model, and our picture profile that we use. So we're gonna really quickly just go to Sony. We're gonna do, where is A7S Mark III? And we shot this in S-Log3, S-Gamma3 dot Cine. And there we go. So as you can see, we are pretty blown out here. Um, now there's a lot of, we'll fix that right now, but there's a lot of film stocks that are included here. My favorites are 5207. I like this Fuji 8553 Eterna. And even this Provia, Fuji Provia 100. Those are kind of like the three main film stocks that I use. You even have other options like black and white. Film photography, film stocks, there is just a lot. Really quickly, you got film color, which kind of, um, it's like your opacity when you apply a LUT kind of thing. It's similar to that. I just like the intensity um, that's there. Of course, you got green. You can add more grain, less grain. It's really up to, to you. Um, and of course it gives you color wheels. It gives you a color curve. So let's just really quickly fix some of this stuff here because um, you know, I'm a noob and we did not expose this right whatsoever. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna bring our contrast down quite a bit. And we blew out our highlights because we're noobs. And it looks like uh, Maybe right about there. So we're looking at, I'm kind of just like looking at a scopes, kind of eyeballing it here. And it looks like my skin tones might still be a little bit too, too hot here. We gotta bring down a lot of this and bring in a lot of contrast here. Now, it looks like our white balance is pretty good. Or we're pretty much white balanced. I think the only thing though with these plugins is that I really have to kind of crank up the saturation a little bit more because I feel like they're not, it's not saturated enough. And right there, that seems to be a pretty good amount of saturation there. And that's pretty much how you get your film look. Um, 5207 seems to be like the most natural looking to me. Um, some of the other more stylized ones are like this Eterna. So the Fuji Eterna kind of really kind of like brings down, you know, 
adds like this like magenta overcast and stuff. And we really need to bring down our mids more. Um, maybe something like that. We really gotta kind of like bring all this stuff down because it's way too punchy. But yeah, so you kind of get the look. It gives you a wide variety of options. And then even then you can add more of like your stylized look. If you wanna add teal and orange, that sort of thing into your color wheels or something like that, you can kind of stylize it from there. Um, but I really like this plugin for those reasons where it just that kind of allows you to match multiple cameras. Uh, it's very easy to do and um, gives you kind of like a good starting point to kind of grade from there or even, you know, just kind of just applying it and just leaving it like that. That's usually what I do. I'm a pretty simple person. I like to apply the LUT and just call it a day. Hopefully this video was not too long and too boring. There was a lot of stuff that we covered in here um, and these are kind of my pretty much my main four LUTs that I use. Now my most favorite one obviously is gonna be the Phantom LUTs. It gives you a really great Airy Rex 709 look right out of the camera, right after applying it. It's super easy to expose for. You can underexpose it, overexpose it, it doesn't really matter. You can fix it, it looks nice. Film Convert is probably my second one that I use the most when I'm trying to match drone footage and A7S footage. And then the Leaming LUTs and the Buttery LUTs are kind of the ones that I really don't like to use too often. Um, I just, for me, it's just the, the workflow just seems to be a little bit more uh, tedious, I guess, in a way. And tedious by meaning like I have to adjust the hue a little bit. Like, it's not a big deal for most people, but for me, I just like to apply something, maybe add a little like, drop the mid tones a little bit or something and that's it. I don't really like to do much else for my footage. And so hopefully this video was informative. I hope you like the comparison to see how the scopes reacted and that sort of thing and the differences between all of the LUTs. So if you like this video, make sure you guys like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.